Alrighty, welcome traders to our Sunday webinar. It is November 6, 2016. I appreciate all of you guys. Um, my name is David, CEO of PositiveTraders.us. Um, today we're just going to be going over the charts. Uh, it is the Sunday before the November elections on two, or I'm sorry, the presidential elections on Tuesday, November 8th. Um, it is getting very, very volatile, and we're, so we're going to run through the pairs, guys. I'm not going to make any recommendations on specific trades yet. Um, I'm going to be watching the charts very, very closely, guys, but everything that is moving the charts is purely fundamental and sentiment right now, all right? The technicals are not being respected. Um, we aren't, it's, it doesn't work with my technical strategy, right? So right now, normally with the, with the charts, guys, you don't have to worry about the fundamentals, right? A report here, a report there, but this isn't just like a small report, right? This is who is going to run the United States, right? And so there's a, a big sentiment over the dollar, right? And if you guys have studied Forex, you guys will, you guys will know that the U.S. dollar makes up for over 60% of the volume in the Forex market. Um, so that being said, it, the dollar is king, right? It, it moves everything. So if you guys have been, you guys might've even gotten a warning from your broker, right? And your broker stated, it's not just the U S dollar. That's going to be volatile. I think they said, uh, the Swiss franc, right? So C C H F, um, the Euro U S dollar. And I believe the pound as well, um, which kind of takes up all of the pairs that I trade guys. Um, you know, I don't trade crosses. I don't trade like ad happy or anything. Um, you know, any, any, uh, uh, what do they call those rare, rare crosses or rare, um, just not the majors, right? These are mostly the majors over here. So let's go ahead and jump into everything, guys. Let's jump into the economic calendar first. Let me switch over to it. I apologize for my connection, guys. It's pretty weak today. Um, so pretty light this week, guys, except for, of course, we have the elections on Tuesday. Okay, so right here, presidential election, all day happening on Tuesday. After Tuesday, guys, let me be very clear. After Tuesday, we are going to have a very clear bias of which way to trade the dollar, right? Things are going to go back to the technical trading. You don't have to worry about the sentiment as much, right? Because it'll, it'll be formed. It's forming now and it'll complete after the presidential election, right? And so if you guys want to write this down, this is the general sentiment. And I know it might not make sense to some of you guys, but this is um, the facts. This is just the way it's playing out this year is that if Hillary Clinton gets elected, that's going to be good for the U.S. dollar. If Donald Trump gets elected, that is going to be bad for the U.S. dollar. Um, now, if you guys have been following, I, I just want to touch briefly on the fundamentals. If you guys have been following this presidential race and what's kind of been happening, um, just to make some make last week make sense, right, guys? So a lot of people weren't expecting um, you know, reversal last week on a lot of pairs, right? And what it was is the dollar weekend last week um, because essentially the model I just told you guys, right? If Hillary wins and that's going to be good for the dollar and if Donald Trump wins, that's going to be bad for the dollar. So as the polls get closer and cl as the election gets closer and closer and the race comes to an end, there's lots of reports that come out. You guys know that there's, you know, the, the investigation with the, the Clinton, um, the Clinton family, right? The Clinton family investigation. And, um, it's last week, guys. Uh, there, the reason why the markets jumped and were so volatile last week, if you guys actually look last week on the 28th, right? If you guys follow news, the FBI uncovered, um, instead of the original 330,000 emails, they thought 650,000 emails. So it was like this entire trove of emails that they didn't, um, they hadn't found. And so they were going to go over it. But the, but the thing is, is that that's going to look bad, right? So that should make sense to you guys, right? So if, it's gonna, and that's going to look bad for Hillary, right? Because more emails and that just looks bad for her. So that puts a negative spin on the dollar. So that's why you guys saw gold rally last week, right? Because remember when gold is doing bad, the dollar, um, I'm sorry, when the dollar is doing bad, gold is doing very good. So you guys can even see on the 28th, right? That's when we saw some massive volatility and started to move to the upside. And same with the euro, right? I mean, you really look at any pair, right? You look at USD chafe too. It started going down on the 28th right? This is the 28th right here. You start to see big candles and they were really, really scared. And now, okay. So if you guys are wondering why the market gapped so hard, and this is why it's very important that you guys learn, like you don't have to 
learn economics and, and know it like the back of your hand, but at least like do the effort to go in and research it, right? I research it. I follow Reuters, Bloomberg, Market Watch, um, a couple different specific people. But um, just today, guys, or just yesterday, it would, depending on what time zone you're in, um, the FBI announced, or you know, the, the head of the FBI, Kami, he announced that, or the head of the investigation, I'm sorry, um, announced that he doesn't believe that there that even with all these extra hundred emails, right, three hundred thousand extra emails, that he still believes that um, there's not enough evidence to indict Hillary Clinton. All right. So that being said, if, if that makes sense to you guys, right, if if, if the, the head of this investigation is saying that basically they aren't really finding a lot of stuff, right? Or, or whatever they're saying, then that's going to look good for Hillary, right? That gives, that gives her supporters like, Oh, okay, that's good. We don't have to worry about her getting indicted or this and that. So now there's a, this big boost. So if you guys want to know why the market dropped so crazy, it's not, it's, it's all fundamentals this week, guys. That's exactly why it's because that this happened before the market opened, right? So that's why you guys see a gap because even on the weekends, Obviously, currencies are still having an exchange rate go back and forth. You, your broker, our broker, just doesn't allow us to trade it, right? So you could trade 24-7, but brokers only allow you to trade 24-5. But it's still revolving on the weekend, guys. It's not like currencies just paused for the weekend. It's a real, real-life economy. So um, things change. And so that's, that's that gap is uh, people were going back to buying the dollar, right? Because that's going to be good for Hillary Clinton. So that's why you saw your USD come down, gold come down because a good dollar, a strong dollar means weak gold. Okay. So any, anyways, guys, this is just like a precursor to why uh, we have to wait until we know who is going to be president, right? Literally guys right now trading any pair that has to do with the U S dollar more um, closely related, like the U S dollar and the Euro. Um, I believe that I think it's really 50, 50. Um, I will, I will tell you guys this, that if I do call some trades in the premium group before uh, Tuesday, that to consider them as extremely aggressive trades, uh, you need to be trading, you know, half or a quarter of your normal lot size. You need to keep your stop losses very tight. Um, I personally will not be doing any trading until after the election. I don't think um, that it's smart, right? And it's not even not that I don't think it's just, you, you know, right. At any second, a news article could come out that could be really good for Donald Trump, or that could be really good for Hillary Clinton or really bad for vice versa. Right. And it's, it's, it's like walking on eggshells and it's, it's just gambling, right? We talk about this all the time that us as Forex traders, we aren't just looking to get in the market just to get in the market. We're looking for well-managed risks and it's not a well-managed risk to be getting in a trade right before the markets. Exactly. Cat Cal, you're throwing a little comment in there. You said polls can come out at any time and rock the markets. That's exactly right, guys. Polls come out left and right. They have all different levels of polls and importance. So um, let, let's go through the technicals, guys. Um, let's take a look at what we have going on this week. But I will tell you guys, though, that um, I, now I am not for either of the presidential candidates. Okay. I'm not for either of them, but just based on what's going on and based on the sentiment and based on, you know, just everything. My opinion is that I think Hillary Clinton will win. Definitely not that I want her guys. Trust me. Like I don't want either of them, but that's just my speculation from all of everything going on right now. So if that happens, you know, that'd be a good dollar. Right. And so, I mean, that'd be good for the dollar. So I would send Euro USD way down, um, USD chafe way up and send gold down. Right. And so those are the pairs that I'm kind of interested in. Once we have the results of the election, um, I, I really do like how, or well, last week, I not, not on this pair, we're, we're going to go to gold. I don't like how on Euro USD Friday's candle, look where Friday's candle closed, right? Right guys out of this zone on Euro USD and it, it's not perfect, right? You could call the zone up here and say that's in the zone, right? But it's such a bullish move, okay? I would not be wanting to sell this even though it is at a PRZ or potential reversal zone. Um, there's a couple things I look at. You guys see the 50% retracement level, right? The 50% retracement level resistance it held for these two days, right? And I told you guys, right? I, I, I hope you guys didn't lose any money on this because I told you guys we are not, even though it looks perfect and this candle on the third, Close right below um, the 50% retracement level. 
it, it looked like a nice short, but I told you guys it's too risky, too close to the markets. Everything is moving fundamentally, okay? And that news about Hillary Clinton and the FBI saying that, you know, they don't, aren't ready to indict her yet or don't have enough information yet, that hadn't come out yet, okay? So Friday, the bias was still negative on the dollar. Um, so let's move forward. Um, looking at gold. So kind of backtracked a little bit, started on Euro USD. Let's start on gold. Um, I would be looking to sell gold if the results is a, a win for Hillary Clinton. If it's a win for uh, Trump, I would be buying gold. All right. It's pretty much as simple as that, guys. We're gonna, and then we're going to be looking at technical levels at that point, right? It doesn't mean just buy automatically, right? We're going to be looking for, um, we're looking for, confirmation. Okay. I'm still a technical trader at the end of the day. I'm still looking for technical confirmation. Last week we had lots of technical confirmation, you know, short gold, um, short the euro, right. And with gold, you know, you could have made it out. You could have made it out, right. You could have shorted up here. But again, that's, that's a risk. That's too risky, right? You don't know what's going to happen on the weekend. You don't know the results that's going to come out. So, um, you know, either, either you got lucky or you didn't get lucky with that trade. So, um, but we didn't, we haven't taken the trade. So I've just been making a recommendation of not to trade until after the election, which makes sense. Um, so let's move forward guys. And if you have questions on these pairs that I'm going over or the analysis doesn't seem clear, you know, type the pair in the chat room. I'll go back to it. I'll recap guys. Um, but I will continue going. All right. USD chafe guys. Um, it's, it's last week guys, right? This, we were looking to take this trade right here. Let me zoom out a little bit. We were, oops, I'm sorry guys. We were looking to take this long. If we had seen confirmation in this area, we didn't see any confirmation. In fact, it actually broke through, um, our entire PRZ broke through the 50%, broke through the 61.8%. So I said to stand aside. Um, still agree that the elections are too volatile and moving the markets too much. Um, so I would look to buy USD Chafe if Hillary wins. I would look to sell USD Chafe if Trump wins. All right, so those are the setups that we'll be looking for on a swing trade basis. All right, GBP USD, guys. It's nearing that area, right? We could actually fib this out. Let me fib it out. It's nearing definitely a PRZ, guys. It's hitting major, major resistance. Oops, sorry about that, guys. Let me draw this fib out a little bit better, and then I'll go back to it, guys, just a second. Oops. All right. So I would be looking to get in to GBP USD. Um, of course, after the election, guys, after the election, don't be taking any trades with the U.S. dollar until after the elections. I mean, unless you don't like your money or something. I mean, you can get you can get lucky. Don't get me wrong, guys. You can get lucky. But what's luck, right? If you just if you know you got lucky and there's no like pure analysis behind it, right? You, that's not sustainable long term. So you can get lucky, but I, I'm not recommending one way or the other. Um, pound, I still think we're going to go short. At some point, um, I think that the pound is still setting up for a sell. Um, not looking to take it yet. Uh, GDP, JPY is nearing an area. Uh, our PRZ, right? We drew this actually last week on the premium webinar. So we're just going to monitor it, see what happens in this area. We're going we're gonna to be keeping an eye on it on the daily in the four hour, see if it can respect this level. Okay, but in my opinion, one candle is not respecting the level. I need to see more of a reversal or more of an exhaustion from the bulls before selling. Um, Australian dollar, US dollar, AUD, USD. Um, I would expect it to, technically, it looks like it may, it may stay inside its range. Um, I, you know, a Hillary win would send AUD, USD down and a Trump win would probably break AUD USD out of the range. So look for confirmation in here, whether it breaks, look for a retest, right? So let me draw that out. Let me draw this for you guys, what that would look like, right? A break and then a retest at some point. 
and then you that's when you want to get in on the retest right but the retest it, it's not any retest it has to look proper it has to be an exhaustion candle or some sort of price action sitting in this area that would hint to the upside um so break retest buy all right that's what we'd be looking to do um again i'm not looking to get into this before the election i'm waiting until i have some results to know which way to go um nzd usd it looks like it still could be playing higher guys all right it's been playing in this range for quite a while um it actually respected this range down here we were looking to get in if it had pulled down down here right you guys can see the original target analysis was get in around the 70.7080 area price didn't make it that far and that's, that's not our far. We don't, we don't control where the markets go. We just look for opportunities if the market goes to where we want it to go to. So um, look for NZD USD to go higher with a, uh, with if, if, if it breaks out of its flag. All right. Um, USD Jappy. Oops, sorry guys. USD Jappy is the big one a lot of people are talking about. There's a huge, huge gap on USD Jappy. Um, I've still been biased to the side right um I, had, I we were looking for support in this area previous resistance even up here to hold um markets didn't quite move in our direction we did have this last uh, exhaustion candle form on thursday friday but the, the only reason i wasn't interested in buying usd jappy or getting into it um was because of um the lack of the retracement right we had such a, a big move down and it didn't have enough uh, the bulls didn't have enough power to retrace, right? If we had closed the daily candle or we had even gotten up into this area, then I may have been, I may have looked at getting into a, a USD Jappy buy. Um, still, long term USD Jappy buy is my bias. Um, however, that can completely change with the outcome of the election, right? A Trump win would send USD Jappy plummeting, and a because all and, and the reason it would plummet, guys, remember that the yen is like a safe haven currency, just like gold, right? When the dollar's weak or, or investors are scared, right? They look to the yen, they look to gold. Um, so that being said, um, USC Jappy going down would be a strong yen and a weak dollar. So you have kind of like a, a double whammy in a sense, right? You have a weak, a really weak dollar and a really strong yen. So that can that can create some very good opportunities. And again, that's only if Trump were to win, right? If Hillary were to win, then USC Jappy is going to probably skyrocket, continue going. So there's different uh, scenarios, but it's really like on the fence. Either one one way is going to happen, or another way is not going to happen. So um, we just have to wait for the results. USD CAD guys, my eyes have 110% been on this. Um, you guys saw it break out of its range down in here. However, if you guys were on the private webinar, right, we noticed this, and this is these are all daily analysis, right, guys? These are all long-term time frames. So when I when you guys hear me talking about my analysis, I'm not necessarily talking about right now. Um, you know, it's we're looking long-term swing trade. Um, so you guys can see this, actually, this resistance all the way back from the 28th, 29th of September of last year, okay? So over a year ago, and you guys can see almost to a T, right? right? Basically the 134.25 area, this general zone um, acted as major resistance. The daily candle made this nice, nice big exhaustion candle. Um, you know, some people went short, some people got lucky, right? Keep in mind guys, like it's, it's complete. It's if you shorted this pair before the end of the weekend or, or you did it or any other pair for that matter and, and got in profit, like, just definitely consider yourself lucky because that didn't have to happen, right? The, the news could have been the other way. It could have been very good for Trump and send, um, the US dollar or USD had way up, had way up, right? Blowing stop losses, blowing accounts. So it's it's a gamble at that point and it's not a risk I'm willing to take. I'm waiting for the technicals set up and the fundamentals to lay a little bit lower. The dollar index, guys, um, really interesting because it does give you um, kind of correlation to what's happening with uh, Euro USD because they do the opposite of each other. However, um, just because what it looks like right now right it looks perfect right you guys see it right now the daily candle bullish engulfing if it closes now don't get me wrong guys if there wasn't the elections we'd be looking at buying the dollar all day long right we'd be looking at selling euro us dollars selling gold or i'm sorry um yeah selling euro us dollars selling gold we'd be looking at buying usd jack in a heartbeat guys like unequivocally without a doubt be taking those trades but it's the fact that 
you know, I'm responsible for not, not responsible, but you guys, you know, pay, premium members, you guys pay me to provide you guys with the highest quality of trades, right? And I'm not just going to call a trade just to call a trade. I'm not going to take that risk. So um, I'm going to wait for when, you know, as a trader, it's just about, it's, it's not about getting caught up in the hype guys. It's not about getting caught up in, you have to make money every day. You have to make money every week. It's about consistent long-term growth. Okay. It's not what happens in a, in a week or in a month or even in a year guys, for you to see serious returns, you're going to have to, um, you know, really dedicate your time. And it's, it's something you have to put your, you really put your all into to really be successful. You know, there, you can definitely by, by all means, you can make Forex a side thing and you can make, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month, a couple thousand dollars a month, or maybe like a thousand dollars a month or $2,000 a month. But if you really want to create like a, a real living, like a, a lifestyle for you bringing in, you know, 10, 20, $30,000 a month with Forex, then you have to, you have to really know when to sit on your hands and know when it's not a good time to get into a trade. And uh, some of you guys, that might sound like an excuse, but uh, if, if that sounds like an excuse, guys, you, you sound, you're definitely following too many like hype beasts. That's what I call them. Like the people that just hype it up and they just, all they do is post profit. It's, and they just say it's like money every day when that's not actually the case. So even though it looks like we should be buying the dollar right now, wait until after the election because who knows guys, just like Brexit, right? A whole turn of events, right? It was all predicted, you know, there's this and that and it didn't come out um, as expected, right? So you guys saw that massive, massive volatility in the pound. Same thing with the dollar, right? Just because all the polls say Hillary's going to win doesn't mean that um, Trump supporters didn't see what happened this week. And I'm sorry, this specifically this weekend and want to jump on the boat. Um, and basically a, a even bigger reason to vote. All right. So that being said, it's really 50, 50. This is probably the most pivotal election, um, in my 23 years on this earth that has been here, right? I've only obviously had only a couple elections cause they happen every four years and sometimes president gets a second term. So uh, it's a little bit different guys. This is really one of the first elections that I'm really like into the politics and understanding things. And it's, it's really interesting, but, um, understanding these things, um, you know, you, you have to know when to, when to take, take the risk and when not to take the risk. And if, if you know jumping into it that it's not a good risk, then don't take it. Um, oil, oil, we may be looking to buy oil. Um, it just, again, <laughs> you guys, I sound like a broken record probably, but it depends on the outcome of the elections. Um, so if it breaks the support area, if it, if this zone, this general area, then we can be looking to sell. Um, if it holds, like it's kind of, you know, made an exhaustion candle on Friday. This candle is kind of struggling to go bullish, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens with this pair. But I would say, um, long term, I would like to be um, biased to the upside. Also, guys, with oil, remember OPEC talked about um, their crude manufacturing. They may not um, stop production as quick as they thought, or not as much. So uh, that really put a damper on CAD and you guys can see that's why CAD has been rallying okay because uh, a weak CAD right and a strong dollar because this whole uh, general election right the whole general bias has been um, positive for the US dollar because it's been pretty much forecasted for Hillary to win. Um, Euro Jappy guys last week this arrow was actually um, on here on last Sunday's webinar and this is the open of last week, right? So maybe if you guys caught some tips, awesome. But I told you guys the general bias on Eurojapi is bullish. And you guys can see that's, that's how it's been, right? We had a little bit of a small retracement last week, but um, we did move up higher. Um, and now we really gapped up higher with Eurojapi. So we'll look for, see if resistance gets broken. Um, and then look to buy if it doesn't get broken and holds, then we'll look to sell. So pretty much as simple as that, guys. Um, I'm sorry I don't have any specifically clear setups. Um, if you guys uh, are really into it and you guys can understand where I'm coming from when I talk about the elections, it's not just like something to blow off and continue trading on the side. It's something that you have to really take seriously, and we have to know the results to know the outcome, guys. Um, 
if you have any questions, any questions you guys can, Brian, you said I'm still in EU, very small risk. Brian, not sure if you're in a buy or a sell, but man, I would, like I was saying, if, if, uh, if, if you took a, a short, all right, when I recommended, uh, well, I was just saying it's, it's probably not the best idea to take a sell last week, even though it looked like it. But if you did take your profits immediately or set your stop loss to break even. All right, if there's any pairs that you guys want me to recap that you guys had any questions on or you want me to go into more detail, um, I am more than happy to answer any questions, guys. And also, I noticed probably almost double people now from when I first started this, guys. Um, I just want to let you guys all know that this weekend I have been um, actually in another state. It's been it's my girlfriend's birthday today, so we've been celebrating her this weekend in California. Um, and but I still wanted to get on today, right? I it, oh man, I can't tell you guys how hard it was to just hop on and um, really trying to spend some time with you guys and just just get you guys to feel that like I, I, I'm here for you guys. I feel you guys, you know, when, when this, especially the, just the past couple of days, it's just been very volatile. A lot of people are uneasy, but it's, you guys have to relax. I've had been having a lot of people asking me like, you know, how do you worry less when you're in a trade? You know, it's, it's simple. You want to worry less when you're in a trade or worry less about losing money in general, then don't risk as much money. It's, it's, it's so simple guys, but people just like, don't, want to they want to like lie to themselves or they don't want to tell you know themselves the truth essentially uh man quoba said look at gold so i'll look at gold real quick so yeah guys that's why this is also really a quick webinar today is because the elections guys i told you just a quick recap for you guys that just hopped on but essentially guys last week the dollar um saw a big big weakening because the fbi had found uh you know announced that they had they were Instead of looking at 300,000 emails, now 600 or 330,000, now 650,000. So almost double the amount of emails they originally thought they had. And so that looked really bad for Hillary Clinton, which you guys know, like I've been saying, that was bad for the dollar. Um, because Hillary, a Hillary Clinton win would be good for the dollar. So if there's news that comes out that's bad for Hillary, then that's going to be, that's going to look bad for the dollar to create a sentiment for big investors. Um, Every everybody that's that's making big moves in the market, the people that really move the market, um, and and moved it up, or move moved the dollar down, which moved Euro USD up. Let's look at gold for you now, and then sorry guys, just to I'm, I'm all over the place, guys. I have like a million things going on today. Has been absolutely crazy this whole weekend has been absolutely crazy so if i'm at a loss for words or i sound all over the place like i really apologize guys if you guys watch my other webinars you guys know it's not like this you know it's very organized normally it's just um i, I barely even have wi-fi where i'm at i had to use my mobile hotspot so it's it's absolutely crazy today let's look at gold though All right, so guys, I'm just gonna recap. Uh, gold, don't. I would be, I'd be biased to, uh, to the downside with a Hillary win. I'd be biased to the upside with a Trump win. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. Don't jump into a trade until after the elections, guys. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's any any other questions, guys. Um, I apologize, guys. I am gonna gonna get off. Sorry to cut this a, a couple minutes short today, but uh, today is a very very important day to me. Um, I'm trying to make it very, very special to my girlfriend. So um, I apologize, guys. I will make up for it by, I'm going to be getting on pair. I'm going to be back in town tomorrow morning. Uh, we go out tomorrow morning and, uh, or we go back tomorrow morning. And then from there, I'm going to be on Periscope a lot more. You guys already saw, if you guys are in the premium group, you guys saw the update in the premium group, right? I'm going to be replacing the um, private webinars with live trading sessions. You guys are going to see my own, separate from the MAM account, my own live account. We're going to be taking trades together. Um, so guys, I, I really got to go. I apologize. I have a, a whole family waiting for me. So, uh, I will catch you guys later. If you have any questions, please message me on Slack or Telegram and I will talk to all you guys later. Thanks.